You see the good news about this clock. What time is it? What time is it? What time is it? Huh? 20 to 6. Okay, let's say 17 to 6. 543. Okay. So would you say this clock is working? Yeah. Okay. We'll stay here till 7 then since it's working. So we are already in the evening service, so we'll stay here until 7. This clock, what would you say about it? Imagine it's not working. You'll say about this clock that it... No, you'll tell me something else about it. Tell me about it. Somebody's got it. It stopped. Yeah, that's one. It's got the wrong time. Something else. You say it all the time. You got it over there. That even a broken clock is right what? Twice each day. <laughs> Ain't so? But God is right all the time. This clock may never work again. But God continues to work. Hallelujah. Look at your season. In seasons of distress and grief, my soul has often found relief and off escape the tempter's snare by thy return. Sweet of prayer. Hallelujah. To dangers, many dangers, toils, and snares we have come. But wherever we are, we have come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord. So I want to share with us this morning. Thank you, praise team. Thank you for the songs this morning. Thank you for the word of God. Are you ready to hear the word of God? Yes, we need it. Amen? Yeah, we need the word of God. You see, the thing about being a Christian is that Whenever your season comes, whatever it is, you're going to need Jesus. So we need Jesus now more than ever. And if you have never needed the Lord before, you sure don't need Him. No, we need Him every day and we need Him every hour and we need Him every night. And we say like the songwriter, hold my hand all the way, every hour, every day, from here to the great unknown. Take my hand, let me stand. Where no one stands alone. Amen. So all the songs that we sing, all the scripture that we quote, they get quote, they get tested at some point. Yeah. You're a Christian. When your season of grief comes, you have to remember that it's just a season of grief, but you've got a hand that you can lean on. Amen. 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 So 2 Timothy chapter 2, 2 Timothy chapter 2, if you're born again, one of these days you're looking forward to leaving here one way or the other. It's going to be by the rapture or Mr. Death is going to seize you. You can't tell what time you're going and how you're going. People have said to me, I prefer to be sleeping and then I just... Doze right off and go right through. But the old folks tell us that you did not choose your lot. But we also remember a lot of songs talking about lot. It says, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well. Though Satan should buffer, though trial should come. But then it doesn't end there. It says, and Lord is the day. When my faith shall be sight, for now we walk, we look to a glass dimly, but then face to face. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hallelujah. Second Timothy chapter 4. Second Timothy chapter 4. Verse 1. St. Paul 
was about to be promoted to glory. Amen? How many of you know when you're born again and you serve the Lord, when He calls you, He calls you to promote you? It's not a sad day. You hear me? Come on now. Humanly speaking, we have lost the bishop. We have lost other people who trusted in Jesus. You hear me? Humanly speaking, but by faith we shall see them again. Yeah. You got to bear in mind that Jesus defeated death. Yeah, he defeated death. But death is the enemy that remains. You hear me? So we're going to have to deal with him until such time. But as Brother Alling was praying this morning, the scripture that I will never leave you nor forsake you. That is the good news part about it. You hear me? Chapter 4, 2 Timothy chapter 4, he says, St. Paul says, I charge you therefore, he's talking to Timothy, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. He says, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. You hear me? Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reproof, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Verse 3 says this For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth. And shall be turned unto fables. Verse 5. But watch thou in all things. As a soldier, you've got to have to endure afflictions. As a pastor, as an evangelist, you've got to do the work of an evangelist. You've got to make full proof of thy ministry. St. Paul was facing his departure from this earth when he says, For I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. But I love this. He says, looking back, he says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. And I have kept the faith. Henceforth, as a result of that, that being the case then, since I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith, then there's a reward for me. There's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. But I'm not selfish. I want to let you know. It's not only to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. You hear me? That's the word of God. So take it from this. This is the reward is for finishers. The reward of which St. Paul spoke about is for finishers. What the guy said in the song. You remember what the guy said in the song? The poet Congress Maynard says what? Finish the song. Finish this song, Pastor Penny, finish this song. Finish this song. The reward is not for those who started and stuttered but didn't finish. You could start and stutter, but make sure you finish. You could have had some difficulties in your life and fell by the wayside, but finish the course that is before you. It is not for those who start but didn't finish. It's not for those who start and stuttered but didn't finish. It is for those who finish. The reward is for those who finish. So he says, I have fought the good fight, or a good fight. Well, I fought if you're a boxer or an athlete, you have put in your very best, if you hear me now. I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race or the course that is before me. And because I have done that, I have made myself eligible based on the word of God to receive. You, you, you hear me? Yeah. A great person's last words are significant. They are a window that helps us to look into his or her path or a measure that helps us evaluate his or her life. 
And in this chapter, we have Paul's last words to Timothy and to the church. It is interesting that Paul expressed no regrets. When he came down to die, he looked back and he says with joy, I have fought. There are three final admonitions that Paul gave to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 4. Uh, and he gave them, he says, in, in chapter 4, 1 to 4, he says, what you got to do, Timothy, is preach the word. You hear me now. And then in the second part from 5 to 8, he says, you got to fulfill your ministry. What is your ministry, my brothers and sisters? What is your ministry? You got to fulfill what God has put on earth for you to do. And then he says, you've got to be diligent and faithful, verses 9 to 22. But today we're going to talk about just what to fulfill the ministry, verses 4, chapter 4, verse 5 to 8. You, to fulfill your ministry, when you fulfill your ministry, then that is when you get the reward. There is a conflict between the devil and God. God did not start this. The devil was the one who sought to usurp authority that he did not have. And in Isaiah chapter 14, he says a series that I will, I will, I will. And God says you will not. So God took care of him. You will not anything here. He says I will ascend again, uh, above uh, the throne of God. Nothing tall goes so. And so God put him in his place. And from that time, Satan has been... In every step, facet of life, opposing God and whatever God does. And anything that God has set up, He has set up a counterfeit, just like what God has set up. And you, 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 He's right here, whether you like it or not, if you're born again Christian, you're caught in this conflict. You're either on the side, you could be on the sidelines folding your arms, but that is not an option. But just know if you're born again that you are in this fight. You need to make sure that you understand that your adversary is the devil. And the Bible says that be careful of your adversary because your adversary, the devil, goes around seeking as a royal lion, seeking who he may devour. I want you to bear that in mind just to notice that if you're born again, whether you like it or not, the devil seeks to devour you. So there's a... There's a there's a, a great war between that which is good and that which is evil of the devil. That which is right of God and that which is wrong of the devil. That which is I am sinful, led by Satan, and that which is righteous, led by God. There's a battle that is raging and you've got to understand that you are inside of this battle. And if you don't take notice and do what you need to do, according to Ephesians, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. If we don't do that, the devil will floor us. Bear that in mind. Yeah, that conflict continues. St. Paul often used when he's talking about in his letters, he used military terms. He used athletic terms to describe what he was saying. He says, I have fought, fighting as in like a boxer. You hear me? You, 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 got, a box, you got a boxer, your boxer is Mike Tyson. All the Mike Tyson fans, you say, yeah. That's why there's Buster Douglas and Evander Holyfield. Yeah. Yeah. So you've got your boxer. So he used imagination to sum up his life in his ministry. He says, uh, like a determined wrestler, I have fought. Like an athlete, I have done that. Like a sprinter, I have finished what was given to me to be done. And he says, like a steward, what faithfully guards his boss's, de his boss's deposit, I have kept the faith. That is the idea. There are three Greek words that he used inside here. One, have fought. The other one, have finished. And the last one is that I have fought. 
I have kept and I have what? Finish. You cannot get there. You hear me, my brothers and sisters? You cannot get the price or the earn the crown until you have fought and finish. You're listening to me. Number one, I want us to put it up. The good fight. Let's look at the good fight. Because a songwriter says it according to 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 12. It says that we are to fight the good fight with what? All of our might. You hear me? You're in this fight. If you're in this fight, the songwriter says, I was alone and idle. I was a sinner too. I heard a voice from heaven saying, there is work to do. I took the master's hand and I joined the heavenly band. Now I am where? On the battlefield for my Lord. You're on the battlefield and you're having your arms folded and you're not going to do anything. Someone is going to knock you down. Just bear that in mind. You say, well, I'm not causing any harm to anyone. Well, that's good. You're making a fool of yourself. You're on the battlefield and you've got to arm yourself for this fight. You hear me? You've got to fight, says the songwriter. Be brave against all evil. Never run or evil fall behind. If you would win for God, all right, then you've got to do what? Stay on the firing line. For you to win, you've got to stay in the fight. So here's it now. Look inside here. Chapter 7. I'm sorry, chapter 4 and verse 7. He says, I have fought. You're listening to me. I have fought. Not I'm going to. Not I could have. You hear me now? Not that there was a chance I felt like it and then somewhere along the way I stopped. You hear me? But no, he says, I have fought a good fight. I have fought a good fight. Look at it in the context of this. In the individual, I was in the fight. And I, being in the fight, put up a good fight. I fought the devil. I fought Satan. I fought his angels and his demons. I had to fight people outside the church who wanted to close the church. I even had to deal with people within the church. I have fought a good fight. I did not allow the devil to knock me out. No. He came many times. You hear me? But here's what. I kept on fighting. I kept on fighting. I kept on fighting. You are Christian. You must, when Mr. Death comes to you, it must be. By the way, you could start writing your eulogy if you haven't as yet. You will write your eulogy by being faithful. That's the only thing they're supposed to say about you. Nothing else. They must say that you are faithful. Be thou faithful until death, and I will what? Give you a crown of life. We've been called to be faithful in the fight. You're not merely in the fight, but you're in the fight, and you're faithful to your part in the fight. Sure, I must fight if I would win. Increase my courage, Lord. I'll bear the toil, endure the pain, supported by your word. In the name, the precious name, of him who died for me. By faith, I'll reach the promised land. Whatever my cross may be, you've got to fight. You've got to fight. You've got to fight. I ain't feel like fighting. If you ain't feel like fighting, you still got to fight. You ain't feel like praying, just pray. You ain't feel like coming to church? Well, get up and tell the devil in your face, I am attending church. When you ain't feel like doing the right thing, it's time to do the right thing. When you ain't feel like going on, you go on. Fight, my brothers. Fight. So when you come down, 
You got to say that you, did, you put up a good fight. Eh? You ain't got to cry. Nobody got to cry about you. You're born again. You hear me? You're born again, but nobody said there was a time when you fell out. But even if you fell out, make sure you fight. Make sure you fight. And come down to the end so nobody could say anything. At least you died fighting. Not on the sidelines. He says, I have fought a good fight. Then the second thing he says here, have finished. You're listening to me. Have finished. The, the boxers can go 12 rounds. I don't think that, they, they used to go 14 and 16. I think 12, just stop that. So 12 is generally the rounds that you go. If in boxing you want, you go 12 rounds. You hear me? But you want to win at the end. Because you can go 12 rounds, but here's what. You can do 12 rounds of boxing and you still lose. Yeah, you can go 12 rounds. When you're in the fight for Jesus, you ain't no loser. You come, that's the idea. The idea is coming to the end. You got to go all the way. In golf, you do nine holes, 18 hole golf course, 36 or 72. That's for golf. In athletics, there are different things that you must complete in order so that you can get whatever medal that they're offering. You hear me? You do 100. You can't do 99 and get the goal. They're not giving goals for people who got the 99 meters. It's 100 meters. You hear me? The 200 meters, the 400 meters, the 5,000 meters. In a marathon, you got to finish. And to take care of all the cheaters, to make sure you report to different stations because they found that people used to go here and there and get in vehicles and before you know it, they're at the finish line. Ladies and gentlemen, you can't cheat God when he requires that you finish the course and get some medal. You've got to finish the course. The cricketers, 20 overs. He ain't work out. They say Duckworth Lewis system. They ain't work out. They say these are the amount of overs that are required. You could knock off the runs. You could do something else concerning that. Football, you get 90 minutes and, and, and injury time and something else. And all kinds of things can happen to you. But here's what. The goal is to finish. There is no Duckworth Lewis system in God's business. There is no idea concerning that. I want you to bear that in mind. The idea, St. Paul says here, not only have I fought, but I fought and I came to the finishing line. You hear me? You ain't want your plane to be going to Barbados. And they get you to St. Lucia and tell you, well, we stop, we're done. This is as far as we got to go to Barbados. You can swim your way over. Eh? Suppose you buy a ticket to go to New York. The airline say you get to Miami. They say, congratulations to you. Act of God, you're responsible for yourself to get yourself to New York. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Airlines have a way of putting it on you, you know. In case you, you know, they throw the burden on you. They say, that's yours. But you say, well, I bought a ticket to such and such a place. They say, congratulations to you. Oh, we will bust you to New York. Because we can't fly you. Like September 11, 2001, you get to Miami and the city airports are closed. You want to go to New York, what do you do? You take a bus or you rent a car. You hear me? The aliens can shortchange you. God is not shortchanging any of, uh, one of us. We must not shortchange him. If we are going to do it, we are going to do it right. If you want to hear, well done, dear, it must be done well here. The key to all of this is faith and faithfulness. You ain't got to say amen. That's the word. He says, I have fought. I have finished. You've got to know one who you're fighting, but you also know where the finish line is. The good news about Christianity is that we all of us know that one of these days we will be judged. The second thing we know, not merely that we're going to be judged, we know what we'll be judged on. 
We also know who the judge is going to be. So we know the criteria, we know everything. We know whether we'll get a crown or not. Based on what we do, we know all of that ahead of time. You hear me? So he says, I have finished the race. Or I have finished the course. I have done what God wanted me to do. You remember in the Old Testament that there was a guy by the name of Saul and God says go out and destroy the Amalekites, man, woman, boy, girl, animals, everything else. And then King Saul had a wonderful idea. And when, when Samuel came the next day, King Saul met him and says, I have done everything that God wanted me to do. And the prophet Samuel says, well, if you have done because it's not based on what we say. It's based on what the Bible says. He says, if you have done all that God wanted you to do, how is it I hear sheep over there? When God wants us to finish, my brothers and sisters, it's not too late. If you're falling by the wayside, if you're not doing it right, do it right before you leave this earth. I don't know how much time I have. I don't know how much time you have. I don't know how much time we have. But I do know this, that if you get an opportunity to do it right, do it right so that you can say like St. Paul's, I have fought, I have finished. You hear me now? I have finished my course. God has laid on all of us a course. Some of us are going to live longer than others. You hear me? It's not how long you live, but how well you live. How well you live is depending on how much you put your faith in Jesus Christ and that you do whatever he calls you to do. He didn't call everybody to be a preacher. He didn't call everybody to be a soloist. But we can do with some encouragers. There are other things for which he has called all of us to do. And all of us during our time, when we come to Jesus, must fulfill that which he has called us to do. That is the idea. And so that when, if you get a chance... To be on a dying bed, you will not look back with sadness and wish that you had done more. That you would have put in all, put in your all and your all in all. So that you don't look back with regret, but you look forward knowing that you have won the crown. You were not doing it to please man, but you were doing it to please God. And as a result... You shook hell, you rob a hell of souls, and you enrich heaven with souls, and you glorified God during such time. And as a result, you look forward to leaving here. You're not worrying about all the money that you've got in the bank. You hear me? You're looking forward, having blazed the trail and having done the right things. Oh, yes. Hebrews says if we are going to do it we must do, we must run the race with joy. In Philippians, um, my good friend here says it. He says, uh, um, in running the race, uh, I have not caught myself to have arrived already in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13, but it says, the forgetting this one thing I do. I forget those things which are past, those things that are behind me, and reaching forward to those things that are ahead. He says, in this race, I press. Just like when you're running, you don't look back one to see who's close to you. You look forward, and you, when you come up there, you press as much as possible. That is the athletic term in which he use. He says, I press towards the mark of the high calling. But I have to forget the things that are past. You hear me now? Yeah. Forget the things that are past. Let me tell you something. Pastor Jones has earned his crowns. But let me tell you something else. You can also own crowns too. And his crowns are not your crowns. Those are his crowns. Just know this. That you have a chance to get crowns as well. You can't make noise about his crowns. You can't say that these are my crowns too. You must work the works of him who sent you while it's there. For the night will come when no man can work. All of us have opportunities to earn crowns. It will not be forever though. It will not be forever. You should look at faithful people. 
in your life. You hear me? Look for faithful people. For you to get to the crown, you have to continue. You hear me? Continue in the faith. Be strong. Move on. You hear me? What Ellie might say about continuing? Tell him I'm calling him. Say it. No. I know he's stronger than ever. Let me tell you what he said. You cannot continue if you never did start. You have to start first. Start off on scratch and prove that you're smart. But you have to start first to continue. Continue means that you have already started. So then you can continue. But if you ain't start, you can't continue. We are continuing. Don't look at other people. Look at you. When you look at others with their lands and gold, think that Christ has promised you his wealth untold. He has promised you that. He has promised you a mansion. You hear me? He has promised you a mansion. He has promised that all of us who are saved one of these days, someday the silver cords will break, and I no more as time shall sing. But oh, the joy when I awake within the palace of my king, and I shall see him face to face and tell the story of his grace, and I shall see him face to face and tell the story what? Saved by grace. But you just don't want to be sitting there when others are receiving their crown and you've got nothing to go. Must I go on empty handed? Must I meet my Savior so? Not one soul with which to greet him. Not must I empty handed go. It is time for us. We can own crowns. St. Paul says not me alone, you know. That's the idea. Love the appearing. It's not me alone. You don't work to go to heaven. But when you're born again, you will work to win souls for heaven. So let's do the scripture. Ephesians chapter 2 says, By grace are you saved, through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, less. Right, so you can get this grace, God's unmerited favor. That's how you get saved. But James says, chapter 2 and verse 18, Yea, a man would say, I have faith, and thou hast works. Show me thy faith without your works, and I will show you that since I'm born again, then it produces fruit. So I will show you my faith by my works. You hear me? Yes. I'll show you. I have fought. I have finished what God has called me to do. I have fulfilled his will. Not when they were looking for me, I was elsewhere. No. You hear me now? Yes. Do it. Whatever we find our hands to do, we should do it what? With all of our heart, with all of our soul, and with all of our might. Do it as unto the Lord. The Bible says to us. You hear me? All right. You're ready to go, finally. You're finally to hear final. Baptist 3. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course, or the race. And did, what did I do? I kept the faith. You hear me? I kept the faith. I did not drop out, drop back. When Mr. Dead came for me, I was there. You hear me? I have kept the faith, the truths and standards of the revealed word of God. What God wanted me to do, I stood up and I lived out the Bible. You hear me? Yes, that is what I did. Let me tell you this, my brothers and sisters, the same Bible that Calvin Jones preached from is the same Bible Michael Penn is preaching from. The same Bible that William Connor and William Tyndale and all the others preach from is the same Bible I'm preaching from. And there's no private interpretation of Scripture from me. You bear that in mind. All of us can fight the good fight. All of us can finish the course. And all of us must be found in the column that we have kept the faith. 
First Timothy chapter 6 and verse 20 says this, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so-called, which some professing have heard concerning the faith. The image is that of a steward. And the Bible says uh, in, in, in keeping the faith, is that of a steward. When you're a steward, you look over your master's business with a sense of, well, you can't take anything from here because they're yours. The Bible says to us, moreover, it's required in stewards that a man be found what? Faithful. That is the idea. If you want to hear well done there, it must be done well here. He says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And as a result of keeping the faith, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. They put on the crown on your head using the Olympics. They put on the crown on your head. So he had an idea of what happened in Greece with the Olympics. So he says, but in this case, it is a crown of righteousness. We have all those different crowns in the Bible, five at least that we, that we count, not only those five, but we also know that the Bible says, from what the Bible says in Matthew and Mark and Luke and John, that they are also, not only do you get crowns, but you also, when you look at the parables, we also get opportunities where we get chances to rule. But you only get chances to rule if you're being faithful. That is the idea. I have fought. I have finished. I have kept. And as a result of that, I stand on the podium to get the goal. You want to finish in the top three. If you're running, ain't so? Yeah, you want to finish in top three. But if you're running for Jesus, you want to finish number one. Don't say, well, Billy Graham going to get all of this. No, 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 you can get it too. You can get too. God is looking not on the numbers. He's looking on the faithfulness. What are we doing? A lot of times they're looking at the numbers. Look at the faithfulness. That's why I can talk of this gentleman up here. He was the Baptist's first driver. You know that? Yeah. The Baptists were the first to have a bus to take their members around. Yeah. Driving the bus faithfully. When you're driving the bus, drive faithfully. Don't make any noise. Do it faithfully. You say, well, a lot of people ain't driving. Do it faithfully as unto the Lord. I know sometimes how we deal with things. Well, they say we must read the daily bread. Tick! Daily bread. Done. They say I must pray. Thank you, Lord, for a good night. Bless, bless everybody. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Bless, 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 bless. You're gone. Tick! Done that. So you've done your daily bread reading. You've done that. They say I must be in church on Wednesday nights. I'm in church. But are you really doing it from the heart? Are you doing it from the heart? Or are you doing it because somebody told you? Do it from the heart. Do it from the heart. That is the idea. You've got something to do. Do it from the heart. That is the idea. Do it from the heart. God is going to judge you and his individually. So let me give you a term that God is not going to be using. Here in town or elsewhere, even in the United States, if two people are going to commit a crime... And one of them got a gun, whether the other one knew it or not, they decided they were going to commit the, commit the crime. They can charge you with joint enterprise. Well, this is also in tort, T-O-R-T, -T, joint enterprise. You conspire. We got together, we said we're going to do this, right? And then the like, when you do that, as a matter of fact, there's a big argument in the United States concerning Joint enterprise, it says that so many black men have been charged with joint enterprises destroying the lives of black men. Because when one guy don't know, they say, well, you know, if you got the gun or whatever, they, I didn't tell the person to pull the trigger and all like that. There. So a lot of times when something going on, joint enterprise is very common in the United States. And it is true, it's common charging the black men. But here's what, let me tell you. John, God will not charge you for anybody, he charged you for you. 
You will have no lawyer, nothing like that. It's you for you. Here you have advocates. Here are lawyers or advocates. You have people to speak on your behalf. And then they can pull you together. God is going to judge us individually. Be that in mind. And you will get a crown. Hear what St. Paul says. Not only me, you know. Go back to 2 Timothy chapter, 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 8. Paul says, not, I am not the only one, verse 8. He says, I am not the only one who is going to get it. But he also says, when I get it, I am going to get it from the righteous judge. Henceforth, there is later for me a crown of righteousness, which means the crown of righteousness is given to me because I have been watching. I love the appearance, looking forward to Jesus coming in the clouds. That's how I get the crown of righteousness, that when he comes in the clouds, the song that we sing is really true. We sing, when he comes again, when he comes again, oh, may he find me faithful to him, doing my best, standing the test. That's how I want the Lord to find me. Not sitting on the side. I'm going to sit out until I don't do enough work. So I tap. Let them there do it. It's time for somebody else. No. He says it now. Which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. Here's what we will have. Wood, stubble, and hay versus gold, silver, and precious stones. Will you be, will your works be in the wood, stubble, and hay? Or will it be in the category of silver, gold, and precious stone because they'll all go in the fire. And when they go in the fire, the fire is going to prove them. And if they survive the fire, which means the wood and the hay and the stone will not, or the stubble, will not survive the fire. So if your works is lighty like that, they can't make the standard of God. God has a set standard. If you want to hear well done there, it's got to be done well here. When you go in the court, if you ain't filed properly, the judge throw out your case. I ain't going forward. They say it needs to be filed properly. This thing is not properly constituted. And when you go in the court, say, well, I have something to carry. They ask you if you have standing. Do you have a right to bring this case here? What gives you the right to bring it? Do you have standing? If you want to get in there, you must have some kind of standing. Are you the one to bring the case? You have a right to do that? No! Well, case thrown out. Well, it must be constituted right, correctly for God. See, the righteous judge, Jesus Christ, will be there to give him on that day. And he says again, not only to me, but unto all them that love his appearing. That's the word. That's the word. Don't just sit down and be a bench warmer. Come on now. We could do more. Yes, can't be a bench warmer. You go up the defense force, you're in the army. You could, as a police, you could lie. Police, you could lie. You're in the defense force, they walk you to the bone. Yeah, we always got work for you to do. Your police will put you to lie. Your police, you got a chance. You could run all the police, you could call in sick. Your defense force, you got to go to the defense force, doctor. And I know in this country, we will just pick with doctor. And depending on who your doctor is, he give you some time off. How much time you want? Take two weeks. I know that to be so. Yeah. And it doesn't matter which government is in power. It will go on for a long time. Here's it. You're a soldier. You're a soldier. You've got to act like a soldier. We are soldiers. We are born again. We are soldiers. So we must act like soldiers. We're in a fight. We're in a fight. 
between good and evil. We're in a fight. We don't have much time. Not a single one of us know when we are going to die. But just know this, that when we die, we'll have to give an account of the time that God has given to us. We might as well get it right now. Get it right. Get it right. I was going to a funeral the other day there. And I had my clothes in the vehicle and I said, I'm change. And somebody gave me a call and I went, yes, I'm going to take care of this matter here one time. Bam. You know I ain't take care of the matter, right? Because I ain't get to the funeral yet. If you understand what I'm talking about. In the midst of life, there is death. Not a single one of us know when it's going to happen. I go up to the hospital all the time to visit people and I always got this naive thing. I'm going to come back and see you. But God knows how many times I've gone there and I'm thinking I'm coming back to see this person. I live in the hands of the Lord. And when I do that, then the next thing, the transition to glory. Well, the transition to eternity. So let's get glory straight. When you're dead, I can't pray for you. Just know that. Let me make that clear. I can't pray for dead people. So when you die, I am not coming to lay hands on you to say, now for your soul. That ain't how we go. You got to make it right and make it right now. That is the word. You've got to make it right, and you've got to make it right when you're conscious and is on this side of eternity. Then if you're born again, you have to recognize that there are crowns to be given out, but the crowns that are to be given out means then that you have to finish. You hear me? Finish. I heard an old, old story of a Savior who came from glory, how he gave his life, where? To do what? And then what else I heard? Of his precious bloods atoning. Then I repented. And, and then this is a song that all God's people sing here. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me. And he bought me with his redeeming love. He loved me before I knew him. And all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory. We need the cleansing. But you know what? You stand. I heard about his mansion. He has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold. Beyond the crystal sea. Yes. What else? Above the angels singing and the old redemption story. And all the people who have gone one of these days and some sweet day I'll sing up there the song. Not a song of losers, but a song. Of victory. You say amen. Amen. You know him. Strengthen your faith today. Resolve to do better. Write your eulogy. Write it with faithfulness. You don't know him. You need to trust him and trust him now. 